Family Theater presents Barbara Hale and Michael O'Shea. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents At 155 Pounds, starring Michael O'Shea. And now, here is your hostess, Barbara Hale. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace with ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, entitled At 155 Pounds, starring Michael O'Shea as Ben Rocco. I tend bar for a living, and in my line of work, you run into a lot of very interesting, uh, you might even say peculiar people. And you hear stories, an awful lot of stories. It's what you might call part of the job. People bring their troubles to a bar, and a lot of them want to talk. Huh? I listen. Virgil didn't want to talk. Uh, hit me a little strange at first, too, because he sure looked like a guy with a problem. Come in wearing a long face, and he climbs up on a stool near the register. Right away, I sizes him up for a guy who's going to try drinking his troubles away. So what does he order? Give me a ginger ale. Ginger ale? Yeah, ginger ale. Nothing in it, just ginger ale. Well, it happens once in a while. I fixed him his ginger ale, and I went on about my business. Long about midnight, the giant empties out. But Virgil, he stays right there. He was working on his fifth ginger ale and just staring at the bottles behind the bar. Once in a while, he'd look at his watch, nod his head, then he'd go right on back staring at the bottles. It was beginning to get under my skin. So I strolled down, put an elbow on the bar right in front of him. On the wagon, Mac? Hmm? Uh, pardon me, what'd you say? I says, uh, on the wagon? Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I owe it to Flavia to get there sober. A wife, huh? Uh, no, girlfriend. Oh. Well, it really, really don't solve nothing. Hmm? Drink, I mean. Oh, no, I see what you mean. Nah, it don't solve nothing. Yeah, guys all the time coming in with problems trying to drown them. Don't wait. Yeah, I know what you mean. You used to try solving them mine that way. <laughs> I figured yeah. you for that guy when you come in. I thought, here's a guy with a problem. First he's going to tell me all about it, then he's going to get stoned. I'll have to send him home in a cab. <laughs> stoned? Just for having a couple of drinks there? Yeah, drunk, you know. Oh, drunk. <laughs> thought you meant something else. Uh, help you any to tell me what's on your mind, Mac? Oh, that's very kind of you, buddy. Yeah, but it's nothing I can't solve myself, though. Thanks, anyway. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, I just, just thought, you know, you might want to talk. And in my line, you, you get used to listening. You know, nah, no, nah, you know. I, I, I wouldn't want to bore you with no, it. No, I wouldn't be bored. No, believe me. Nothing to do. No customers <laughs> might help to pass the time, you know. Ah, well. You might find it a little hard to believe. Mac, you ought to hear some of the stories I hear. I, I, I notice you, you keep uh, looking at your watch. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's all part of it, you know what I mean? I'm leaving for ancient Rome in a few minutes. Ancient Rome? Now, when a guy says he's going to Rome, that's interesting. But when a guy says he's going to ancient Rome, uh, makes you stop and think. I, I fixed the guy out of ginger ale, I drew myself a beer, and we both moved to a booth. As soon as we sit down, he hauls a battered newspaper clipping out of his wallet, and he shows it to me. Wanted. Young man with no friends or relatives seeking adventure, travel, grandeur to take journey and report on findings. Must be responsible and weigh less than 155 pounds. 155 pounds? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what attracted my attention. See, I answered that ad. Hey, you want to hear what happened? Yeah, 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 I do. Well... See, the address mentioned is this one. The laboratory is in the same building that this bar is in. Well, when I answered that ad, I was, well, I was pretty much down on my luck. In fact, you could say I was well on my way towards being a bum. You know, I'm still a little surprised I got the job. Well, anyhow, you see, when I went up to be interviewed... Uh, just why do you think you fit the requirements, Mr. Rocco? 
What do you mean, why? You want a responsible guy who weighs in less than 155 pounds, right? Mm. That's me. Uh, responsible, Mr. Rocco, have you been drinking? Well, I had a short one an hour or so ago, but... Are you an alcoholic, Mr. Rocco? Look, buddy, just because a guy has a... Hey, what kind of interview is this? Are you? Now, look, you got no right Mr. to Mr. Question... Rocco, this, this is not the kind of a job we could trust to just any bum that happened along, and you do look very much like a bum to me, you know. Well, if I look like a bum, then why don't you go get somebody else? Uh, because, Mr. Rocco, you're the only one who answered the ad. Oh. Are you an alcoholic, Mr. Rocco? Okay. I am not a alcoholic. But you might say I'm training to be one. Training? Yeah. See, I was engaged to a girl, but she wanted a big guy, so she marries my best friend. Couldn't stop thinking about that girl. Started hitting the bottle. Then I started hitting people. Now, when you're a professional fighter, that's, uh, that's not so good. If I use my fist on anybody in the state, it's assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, how long ago did this all happen, this romantic trouble? Hey, talkative. Look, maybe it's my turn to ask a few questions. What kind of deal is this? It's time travel. Did you say uh, time travel? That's right. We are going to send you to Rome in the year 134 AD. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? It's been nice talking to you. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Mister, you're Daffy. Uh, what makes you think so? Mr. Time Travel is a science fiction gimmick. Sure, it's used in stories, but in real life, it's just, it's just... Well, it's impossible. If, if you're thinking of paying me for some trip in a, in a kind of a, uh, so long... Uh, wait, 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 I'll, uh, I'll even pay you if it doesn't work. Even if it doesn't work? That's right. Uh, uh how much? Uh, One thousand dollars. Ten crisp one hundred dollar bills. Here, here, you count. Uh, 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 thousand bucks, huh? What have you got to lose? Sounds like this guy was a real crackpot. Yeah, that's the way I figured it, but a thousand bucks, what are you going to do, a thousand bucks? Well, 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 then what happened? Well, I decided to go along. Naturally. Well, he took me in another room and he gives me a toga. Toga? Yeah, it's a, it's a flowing, kind of a loose-fitting garment the Romans wear. War. War. And he gave me a pad of notepaper and a handful of pencils. <laughs> Hey, how's your memory? 2020. Oh, well, uh, come along. What did you ask for? You may not be able to use the notepad, you know. My machine will transport human tissue, but I'm not at all sure about other things. Then you mean that... Hey, wait a minute. You, you mean this bathrobe here? It might stay, yes, yes. And it's not a bathrobe, it's, it's a toga. Oh, now, wait a minute, buddy. Well, I, what I, are I... you so concerned about? What am I concerned about? You're talking about plunk me down in the middle of ancient Rome without a stitch of clothes? Didn't you say you were sure the whole thing wouldn't work? Well, yeah, I suppose that's right, but... Then don't worry about it. Well, here it is. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a doll. The, the, this is your time machine? I prefer to think of it as a chrono-porter. Uh, crum, uh, uh, por and now look, buddy, if by some queer quirk of fate this thing works and I am... Oh, believe me, you haven't a thing to worry about. You see these gauges and dials? Yeah. They're set to move you into the Bath of Hadrian, a public bathhouse on a warm summer afternoon in the year 134 A.D. Now, it might prove a little embarrassing if your toga went with you, but not at all otherwise. You still worried? Worried? <laughs> well, it isn't as if I were actually worried. It's just, well, I mean, a thing like this could never... You don't know how Absolutely I Absolutely could... right. Huh? Yes. Now, sit right here. Here? Mm. Oh, my dear, uh, traveling through time, it's ridiculous. You couldn't... Hey, what are you doing? They're just strapping you in so you won't fall out. Fall out? Man, I've fallen off stools, but I never fell off a chair my whole life. Well, <laughs> this is this is a rather special chair. Hey, now, look, buddy, wait a minute. Uh, take the... What is this, a gag? No, listen. this is not a gag, and if you listen to me for just a minute, I'll tell you what I'm paying you for. Well, start telling. Now, you're about to go on a wondrously fascinating trip, but this is an experiment. Depending on how much success we have with this little journey, we will plan other journeys. 
And keep your eyes and ears open. Take notes if you can. You won't have to worry about language. The chronoporter takes care of that. Yeah, but now, but the... uh, don't stay more than no 12 hours. Oh, In I'm the event you want to come back earlier than that, just go to the spot you arrived at yes, uh, and wait. The machine will be turned on automatically every hour to bring you back. back. Any questions before I pull the switch? Yeah, yeah. Look, if this is going to be such a wondrously fascinating trip, why did you advertise for a guy with no friends or relatives? Why didn't you take the trip yourself? Well, as I said, I mean to put you in one of the public baths, but a few feet one way or the other might put the traveler in the center of a marble pillar. Uh, uh, a marble pillar? Or a tree. A tree, yeah. Now, well, wait just one minute, buddy. Uh, don't pull a thing, because I want to tell you, I gotta, I'm quitting. Let me out of the I'm thing. I'm afraid the it's is... too late now. Uh, bon voyage. <laughs> was a sensation I'll never forget. I, I, I saw that switch come down and then things started to get fuzzy and the, the whole room felt like it was turning around slowly. First it was slow, very slow, and then I got faster and faster and faster and then I felt myself holding onto the chair straps and... Then all of a sudden the straps were gone and the chair was gone and things started to come back into focus. Only I was no longer in any office anymore. I am hanging in the air about 20 feet over the water in about the biggest indoor plunge I ever saw in my whole life. I remember hanging there while things came back into focus. Everybody was watching me like in a nightmare. Then when everything came into a good clear picture, I fell. Bravo! Bravo! Young man, swim over this way. Ho, over here. Did you see that dive, Tertius? Remarkable, Senator Gracus. Remarkable. Here, 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 you, here, I'll give you a hand. I'll help you out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Oh, I am Senator Gracus, and this is Tertius Aurelius, centurion in the Praetorian Guard. Oh, uh, pleasure. Name is Ben. Ben. A remarkable dive, citizen. Yeah, you're telling me. I wonder if you'd mind telling us just how you accomplished it. Yes, there seems to be nothing from which to dive which would have landed you in the exact center of the tepidarium. Well, uh, boys, you know how it is. Uh, if I told you, you wouldn't believe it in the first place, and then after all, it, you know, it's a professional secret, you know what I mean? Professional? Uh, well, you're an acrobat. No, no, I'm a, I'm a middleweight, you know, a uh, fight game. Fight game? Well, he looks a bit small for it, but he probably means he's a gladiator, Senator. Uh, uh, what? Of course, after a dive like that, Tertius, where else would he have gotten the training but in the arena? Probably the palestria. The, the palestria? I never heard of the palestria, but I fought in Pittsburgh Arena a couple of times. <laughs> you see, Tertius? Pittsburgh? Uh, yeah, and I was uh, pretty well known around the Legion Stadium out on the coast, but I did most of me fighting in a garden. The garden. Whose garden? Where are you from, citizen? Uh, originally from Syracuse. Yes, I've heard of the place. It's on the coast of Sicily, uh, on the southeast. Uh, uh, no, no, Mac, it's uh, in central New York State. Uh, central New what? Uh, now, just a minute. Uh, you boys mind telling me, uh, where am I? Oh, where you are? <laughs> Sounds as if you've had too much wine, citizen. Well, not lately. <laughs> well, well, lately. well, well, well. One meets interesting people in the Bath of Hadrian. The Bath of Hadrian? Aiden, this really is Rome. This is a very strange young man, Tertius. All roads lead to Rome and all kinds travel them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the year, it's uh, 134... A.D., right? 134! Oh, oh, by all the household gods, Tertius. What do you think of that? Too what much wine. What else? else? Yeah, well, well, is it 134 or ain't it? This is the year of Rome. 882. 882? Oh, murder. Somebody goofed. Mm. Perhaps a little walk in the sun would help you clear your head. Uh, then, too, you must be uncomfortable in your wet clothing. Uh, let's step out in the sunlight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still wearing this bathrobe. Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. I'm Gee, not well. might make an interesting dinner guest, Senator. Uh, yes, uh, let's play a little trigon, sound him out. <laughs> you get about five balls and we'll start the game, Tertius. Oh, uh, you care for a little uh, trigon, friend? Trigon? Well, I never heard of it, buddy. But I'll tell you the truth. At this stage of the game, I'll drink anything. <laughs> Well, 
Well, as it turns out, uh, Trigon is a kind of ball game and not what I'm thinking it is at all. It also turns out that these guys seem to be pretty interested in every word I say, which is a new thing to a guy with my background and my vocabulary. Pretty soon after it started getting dark, the senator wouldn't have it any other way than that I should be his guest for as long as I am going to stay in Rome. Benny Rocco has never been a man to turn down a few free meals. Oh, but I want to tell you, the house, the house was a real surprise. Looked like a museum, kind of. That is, when it wasn't looking like something you'd only expect to see in Cinemascope. Vases four feet tall with no flowers in them, uh, pillars holding up nothing at all, slaves running around with nobody chasing them, busts of this guy and busts of that guy all over the place. I want to tell you. Say, hey, uh, nice little place you got here, Senator. How's that? I believe your new friend approves of your home, Senator. Ah, yeah, yeah, but pretty elegant. Well, I hope you'll approve of the dinner as well. <laughs> you know, I remember reading somewhere something about your, your Roman banquets. Roman banquets? Well, undoubtedly, you were reading history. They began to decline in favor when Flavian became emperor. And the custom fares as poorly under Hadrian. <laughs> you don't say... That's very interesting. I expect Flavia... Uh, the emperor? No, no, my daughter. She was named for him. I imagine she's planned a simple meal. I believe she said something about bacon and eggs. And a few greens from your garden, I hope, Senator. <laughs> well, I suppose so. Yes, I suppose so. <clears throat> bacon and eggs in ancient Rome? Man, things are not getting any better. Father? Oh, oh. Flavia, my dear. Daughter? Hello, Tertius. Hello, Father. Uh, um... This is his daughter. And the true master of the house. My dear, we have a guest. His name is Ben Rocco. Ben Rocco. Ben Rocco. Isn't Ben the Jewish word for prince? Are you a Jewish prince? Well, I'm afraid not. It's uh, just a nickname, ma'am. Nickname? Yeah, you know, a short name. Make it easy on yourself. Real name's not so good. Well, what might it be, Ben Rocco? Got a good hold of yourself, sister? Virgil. My father used to read books. Oh, oh, that's a venerable name. If a little misplaced. How very fascinating. Our guest is a gladiator, my dear. And from what he says, a very successful one. Oh, I've done a little time on the canvas. On the canvas? I don't believe we've had the pleasure of entertaining a gladiator before. Oh, you have so few scars. Well, I'm a little cut up around the eyes as all, ma'am. Had a good training, you know what I mean? Oh, I think this is going to be very fascinating. Shall we all go into dinner? Yes, 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 of course. Dinner. Where were you trained, Virgil? Uh, look, ma'am, I'd appreciate it if you just call me Ben, huh? Well, I guess you could say I did most of me training in a garden. In the garden? What a strange place right for a gladiator from the start, that Flavia and me hit it off, of and I can tell you it made me feel it. pretty good. No, Flavia's a real man. doll, and it wasn't really long before I was feeling the world as my Eichstein. But the longer I talked, the more I notice that this Tertius guy's nose is getting out of joint. And you predict that someday men will actually fly through the air? Well, that Greek was supposed to have done it. Now, what was his name? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Icarus. Made wings out of wax. He flied too near the sun, I believe. <laughs> well, it's not going to happen for a long time, but believe me, it's going to happen. Oh, and one other thing. What did I tell you about the horseless carriages? Uh, horseless chariots, I should have said. Bilge. Uh, how's that, Tertius? Bilge. By Mars and Jupiter, I've never heard such swill outside a drinking bout. Why say you swill, Tertius? If you're such a prophet, my friend, tell us who our next emperor will be, or how long the army will be held to only 30 legions. Hey, oh, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not too sharp on the history of ancient Rome. Gentlemen, gentlemen, Another please. time you say that ancient Rome. Rome under the Emperor Hadrian is the most modern city in the world. Seat of civilization. Buddy, it was only a slip. I'm sorry. And I've like... been watching the way you've been smiling at Flavia. She's promised to me. I forbid you to fill her head with any more of your lies. Look, Buddy, I have been not been lying, and I'm sorry. I didn't know you two were engaged. We were promised to each other when I was only 13, Virgil. You mean you had nothing to say about the matter with this... Well, how can one fight custom? Then, too, Citizen Rocco, you say you've defeated 26 men in the arena. I'll call you a liar on that one, too. Now, most guys couldn't take an insult like that. But a guy who fights pro, well, he kind of gets used to it. A fighter can get himself into a whole lot of trouble in some states using his fists at social functions. 
I figured maybe Rome was one of these places. So I just kind of smiled and leaned back and said the wrong thing. Look, I don't want to fight you, buddy, and I got a pretty good reason. But if you need one for the record, let's just say I won't fight you because it's, well, it's just not the Christian thing to do. Well, so when I said that, he looked kind of funny, like he didn't know whether I was kidding or not. And he turned and stormed out of the palace. I told you Tertius was a centurion in the Praetorian Guard. Look, Dad, I got nothing against the military. I was a soldier once myself. You don't understand, Virgil. Tertius has ordered to arrest all Christians. And you, dear Virgil, are a Christian. Oh. Well, sir, it turns out that the senator is a real good Joe. In fact, he and his daughter are both Christians on the slide themselves, and so they're all for giving me all the protection they can. And I'm all for taking it. After all, who wants to be lunch for a lion? Well, they kept me in the house for two days, and Flavia, well, she made me want to stay there forever. But along towards the evening of the second day, I began to remember something, and it made me kind of fidgety. What's wrong, Virgil? Are you worried about Tertius? That bum? No, honey, it's... Well, look, I, I, I got something on my mind, that's all. Hey, you want to go out into the garden? Honey, I don't know whether I can tell you about it or not. Just speak your mind, Virgil. Shouldn't it be easier for you here in the garden? Well, you see right there, that's part of it, you could almost say. You, you think I feel more at home in a garden because I said I got most of my training in one. Honey, the garden I trained in was called Madison Square Garden, and it's a whole lot different from this one. You see, we, we just come from two totally different worlds, honey. Aren't you happy in this one? Kid, I've been happier here than I ever been in my whole life. But you see, I, I made a deal when I came here. A deal? Well, an agreement, sort of. You see, a guy paid me a thousand bucks to make this trip, and... I, I don't understand. I know you don't, but listen. This guy paid me a lot of money to make this trip, and part of the deal was that I was to remember and to tell him all about it. And that's what I got to do. I got to go back and remember and tell him about everything that happened. Oh, oh, I see. No, no, you see, you don't see. But believe me, kid, I'll be coming back. But this guy, he gave me something great. And, 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 and I got to give him what he paid for. If I don't, well, I'm, I'm just a bum. Will you come back, Virgil? Flavia, baby, do you think I'd leave you alone with that slob, Tertius? Now, you may be promised to him, but you're my girl, and that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> I'll come back, honey. Well, I borrowed a few quadrants, that's uh, money in Roman, from Flavia, to pay the admission price for the bath of Hadrian. And then I did the hardest thing I ever did in my life. I left her. I kind of stuck to the back streets on the way there to avoid seeing Tertius and his boys, and I, I was lucky, right up until I was inside the baths and just about ready to climb into the tepidarium tank. You, gladiator, stop! Uh oh think of the devil and up he pops. How'd you find me, Hawkshaw? I've had enough of your insults, Christian. The name of the divine Hadrian, Emperor of Rome. I arrest you for subversion and treason. You, uh, figuring on throwing me to the lions, are you? If I don't kill you myself. Oh, now look, buddy. Oh, I don't want to hurt you. Why don't you just go play soldier out in the backyard? I'll show you how a Roman plays soldier. Don't you think you better go get some help for yourself? That was your last insult. I'm going to kill you. I want to tell you, this kid comes at me like an angry gorilla. And that's when he made his first mistake. <laughs> he grabbed out from my throat with his right. I bobs and weaves to the left. Hooked him in the midsection with right. He backed up a few feet, and then he rushes at me, swinging with both hands. I popped him a few left jabs, and I felt his teeth breaking under my knuckles. Then one good solid belt right to the note, and I want to tell you the fight is over. I jumps into the water, swims to the spot where I'd fallen in, and then things began going out of focus, and, well, here I am. Man, that's quite a story. What are you going to do now? I'm going back. I told the professor the works, he paid me off, and in a couple of minutes, I'm going to pop upstairs and he's going to send me back. Yeah, but what about this Tertius? Who cares for that bum? 
Man, well, what about the lions? You're, you're a Christian. And then... What uh, am I going to do? Leave Flavia there to uh, perspire it out alone? Well, sure, yeah. No, I... But well, what about the date being all balled up? The professor had things figured out on a Christian calendar instead of a Roman one. You see what I mean, buddy? No trouble there at all. <laughs> How about that? Well, I want to tell you, it's been real nice talking to you, but I, I better be getting along, huh? Oh, wait a minute, you, you sure you know what you're doing? Well, I think so. Well, good luck, Mac. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. Hey, thanks. You know your real understanding? <laughs> With that, the, uh, the guy walks out of my bar. I never saw him again. And I'll have to confess, for a long time, I thought he was punchy. It happens to some fighters, I heard. Then the other day in the library, I happened to pick up a book on Roman history. Ran across the mention of a gladiator named Rocco who lived during the reign of Hadrian. In the footnote, it said that he was unique among those in his profession because he was a family man and also because he never killed those he fought in the arena. Makes you stop and think. Hello, this is Barbara Hale again. You know Family Theater receives many letters from its listeners, most of them expressing gratitude for the message of faith and hope that this program tries to convey each week. But every so often we receive a letter which contains its own message of faith, and when that happens we try to pass it on to you. The following is a short poem sent to us by a woman whose son was killed during World War II. It helped her then to bear the terrible burden of grief that such a loss inflicts, and she feels it may help others like her today. The poem is entitled Resignation. He gave me a splinter from his cross, and there I knelt complaining, for I could not lift the heavy load with all my human straining. And then, as I raised my anguished eyes, I saw my Savior weeping that I could refuse to give my son back to his loving keeping. And knowing now he was lent to me, the loveliest of God's favors. I returned him to the Savior's arms and rose to resume my labors. Just a parting reminder, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed at 155 pounds. Starring Michael O'Shea, Barbara Hale was your hostess. Others in our cast were Gloria Grant, Howard McNear, Herb Vigran, and John Larch. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Stolen Symphony, starring Hugh O'Brien and Anne Francis. Jimmy Durante will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>